Good morning, everybody. We're back on the road. It's a beautiful day here in Northern Ontario. We're on Highway 11, nearby Hearst, Ontario. We left Campus Casing this morning. That's where we slept last night. They have great internet there. I can upload videos faster at Flying J's in the back of the parking lot than I can at home. They have incredible Wi-Fi. So we're gonna get as far as we can today. Uh, still pulling this 10 foot wide load. So I can't drive down these highways at night. So the latest I can drive is a half hour after sunset. So I'm thinking we should probably make it to around Dryden, maybe, Dryden, Ontario. And we'll see. See how we're feeling, see where we get to. And before you say anything, yes, I will acknowledge that my windshield does need to be replaced. I have an appointment. And by the time you watch this video, it will already be replaced. I had a guy throw some rocks at me. Well, he didn't actually throw it at me. His truck threw it at me. Very rude. It was actually in Alberta last week. A big oil field truck pulled out in front of me and must have just come off like a very loose gravel lot or something. It was just throwing stones like mad. I actually had to slow right down to let him get ahead of me because he was throwing so many stones. And two of them hit my windshield. And I had two chips that I was gonna get filled and get replaced as soon as I got back. But going from the warm weather to the cold weather, and then my windshield a, uh, heats up, cools down. Suddenly I looked over and I had this crack on my windshield. So that has to get replaced ASAP and we're gonna get that done right away. Like I said, by the time you're watching this, it's already been replaced, so. I saw your comments, thanks for letting me know. I'm aware. Today's gonna be a good day though, I can feel it. Feel it in my bones, it's gonna be a good day. I'm just happy that it's not snowing. I'm very tired of that stuff already. I want spring, I wanna go camping. I wanna go to the beach, I wanna go swimming. here in Beardmore, Ontario now. We're getting close to Nipigon. Eh, about, well, 45 minutes or so from Highway 17. That's where uh, the two highways meet. And then there is a couple of fuel stations right there as well. I'm gonna stop at the Petro Pass and hopefully they'll have DEF because the last couple of the truck stops I stopped at to fuel, their DEF pumps were frozen. So whenever I find a place that has DEF pumps that are not frozen, I always top up my tank, because you never know. We're headed out west and it was apparently pretty cold there last week, I don't know how it is right now, but that probably means I won't be able to buy any bulk DEF out there. The DEF in this tank lasts about 4,000 kilometers, or like, yeah, almost, almost 3,000. 2,500 2, miles, it's a, 20, a little over 2,500 miles, 3,000 miles. I haven't really ever checked before, but I know I can drive for days and days and days without fueling up that DEF tank. And if you're new to the vlog, don't know what I'm talking about, DEF is a diesel exhaust fluid that all diesel vehicles now have, even the pickup trucks. It just cleans out the exhaust so that the exhaust that actually leaves the truck out the stack uh, is cleaner. It's not that black smoke. You won't see black smoke coming out of new trucks. If you do, there's something very wrong. Because that prevents all of that. 
It used to be when you started up your truck in the winter time and it was a, a cold start that the truck would just pour out white smoke for like half an hour till it warmed up, right? But now with this new DEF system on every truck, they don't do that anymore. Not as much anyway. Very, very little. And it's like a fluid, it's sort of like water. I think in Europe they call it AdBlue. It's sort of like a bluish watery thing, but don't drink it. Uh, <laughs> Point of advice, don't drink it. It looks like water, but it's not water. It's not vodka either. You Russians. <laughs> you come over here and visit, that, that's not vodka. All right, I showed you this stretch last time and I do almost every time I come through here. As throughout the seasons of the year, this is still the most beautiful stretch of highway in Northern Ontario, in my opinion. I mean, Highway 17, uh, around by the lakes is pretty scenic as well, but maybe I should say this is the most scenic on Highway 11 We're just coming up like I was telling you in the last clip to the Junction with the 17, but there's this beautiful you're, you're driving across like the flatlands right up north on the 11th and suddenly you come up to these rolling hills You got to sort of wind your way through them and then you come out beside this this big lake with this picturesque old church up on the little hill beside the lake. I think it's just beautiful. There's so many beautiful places to see in this world. And, you know, I only travel North America, Canada, and the United States. I mean, I haven't even been outside those countries in my lifetime. There's so many other places in this world that I would love to go and see. So many places. Like Australia, I would love to go see Australia, but to see all of Australia would take so long. Like, There's still so many places here in Canada and the United States that I haven't seen yet. I still go to new places all the time. And I I'd like to see everything, but for that I would need a lifespan of like 500 years. I'd love to go to Europe and see the old world and see how it's sort of, uh, the modern world has sort of been built over the, the old world in Europe, if you know what I mean. Uh, I guess I don't really even know what I mean because I haven't been there, but there's so many thousands of years of history there and You know Brit is related to uh, Someone who owns a castle in Germany uh, They have a castle in their family and oh I'm married into royalty. <laughs> I'd love to go see that I'd love to go uh, You know, see the United Kingdom. I want to go there just to rent a car and drive on the wrong side of the road that is Australia, same thing. First thing I would do when I land there is I'd rent a car just so I could drive around on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> That's one thing I've always wanted to do. And also in Australia, I'd love to pull one of those road trains that they have going across their outback where the, the trucks drive with however many trailers behind them. Like across the prairies in Canada, we do two 53-foot trailers sometimes. And you can have up to three trailers now. In, on some routes on the prairies of Canada, but in the outback of Australia like You Aussies can tell me down below in the comment section, but I'm pretty sure they have what like 10 bus trailers behind one truck Oh, that'd be so much fun so much fun The only thing that sort of turns me off from Australia is that everything there wants to kill me and the spiders are like mutant demons from the pits of hell and I have arachnophobia, and I just don't know if I could sleep or anything. Because I know all you Aussies will back me up. The spiders there, they're bigger than your face. They're bigger than, they're like, they could take you out. And they just fall out of trees and land on you. Ah! No, no. That's the one thing that keeps me away from Australia. And then... Not to mention all the other snakes and other animals there that want to kill me. Everything there is poisonous. But that won't stop me. I will visit you one day. I might have to come in like a like a protective bomb suit or something, but I'm gonna come. Look out.
comes that church right here that I was talking about. Right on the lake. You can see the bridge over there already. That's the one bridge that connects Eastern Canada and Western Canada. It's the only way. <laughs> it's the only road connecting. And remember, was it last, no, a couple years ago, they built a new bridge and then it failed and it buckled, so they had to shut it down. And that shut down all traffic and freight going east to west, and it just messed with our whole economy. All because everything relies on one bridge. They built two bridges now, one for each direction. So I guess if one buckles now, they can use the other one, but. <laughs> Ridiculous, eh, Diesel? Yeah, man, we need another road, eh? Yeah, no kidding. One day. Here we're just merging on to the one highway. It's the 11 and 17 come together here. And this is the bridge. Well, there's two here. The one we're going over now, I think, is the one that buckled and shut down the country. <laughs> However many billions of dollars it cost to build it, and apparently the engineer forgot that it gets cold up here. So in the winter time, it contracted and buckled. But they fixed it, and I guess he learned his lesson. A very expensive lesson, but... <laughs> it was one of those projects, again, that went, you know, over time, over budget. So this is the town of Nipigon that we're coming up to here. I'm gonna stop for fuel, or DEF, sorry. I'm gonna stop for fuel in uh, Thunder Bay. A little ways ahead, but 45 minutes ahead, there's a Flying J. I can get my points then. But their DEF pumps, I'm sure, will be frozen, whereas Petropass, there should work. I guess we'll see. Good morning. We're in Dryden, Ontario, making our way east. We have to be in Alberta tomorrow or the next day. Hoping I can get there for tomorrow, but we have 1,600 kilometers to go yet. We've already been driving for two days. So that's another two days of drive. That's about a thousand miles, if you're wondering. Almost exactly. So I gotta stop by home today. I gotta drop off the weasel again. So the next few days will be without the weasel. I'm gonna be lonely and sad. But good thing I have you fine people here with me. Keep me company. Uh, delivering this to that site again that doesn't like dogs. Even though the guy at the other end, like I told you the other day, he said it should be fine and, you know, tell them to give him a call if they have a problem. I just don't want any problems to begin with, you know? I just want to get there, deliver my stuff, and get out of there. And I'm coming right back home usually anyway, so... Whatever, Diesel misses his mom and his brothers anyway, so he can go home and run around with them for a bit. Right, you want to go home, Diesel? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you home today, okay? And uh, yeah, so next stop is home. I'm gonna park as nearby home as I can. I'm not gonna be home for very long. I'm just dropping in for a couple of hours. I'll have lunch with her and drop Diesel off. Relax a little bit. Probably upload some videos <laughs> and we'll be on our way. Well, we have a bit of change of plans. If you look over to the left, there's my trailer. I'll try to get in here without blocking the road here. So I bobtailed into town. Let me tell you the story about this. One second here, let me get in front of my trailer again. My truck's going into the shop. I put a Band-Aid on it for now. Let me hook onto my trailer here again and I'll explain it all to you. Having a bad day. We got an oil leak. It's somewhat of a slow leak, but it's a little too fast of a leak to continue with this load all the way to Alberta. So uh, I noticed that I had to put in two gallons of oil yesterday, which is weird. I've never had to add oil to this engine before between service jobs. And I'm like, Oh no, two gallons. So I put a note in my head of like, hey, next time I get home, we got to get this looked at. I shouldn't be burning any oil at all. 
And then today I checked the oil in the morning and it had gone down again. It was still above the ad line quite a bit. So I'm like, oh, my oil's still going down. This isn't good. I'll keep an eye on it, right? Driving down the road, minding my own business, and suddenly my truck starts beeping at me saying, hey, something is wrong. You should probably pull over in not so many words. So uh, I started freaking out a little bit. I found this little pull out here and I pulled in. I, I checked all my gauges. I checked everything. I went to go check my oil. Oil wasn't even touching the dipstick, or it was just barely tipping the bottom of it, I think. <laughs> and I forgot to pick up oil this morning because I didn't think anything of it. I, I added two gallons of oil. I checked the oil this morning. It was fine. So I'm like, okay, hey, well, when I get home, I'll get a better deal on the oil if I go buy it at Walmart or something, right? That's what I usually do. Okay, hey, well, I'll go pick up oil and you know, replenish my supplies as soon as I can get a better deal on it, right? The midnight in me. I don't want to pay as much as I have to at the truck stops. So I had no oil in the truck, of course, right when my truck decides to go weird on me. And I'm four hours from Winnipeg right now, three, maybe less than that. And uh, so I, I called into town. I'm literally less than 10 miles from Kenora. It's the, the last town before you hit the province of Manitoba, my home province. The best province, I might just say. At least the southern part. I like the southern part. Southeast, specifically. It's like the best. The best of the best. Believe me, everybody says it. Believe me. I'm getting sidetracked. I'm just joking around. I'm kind of laughing about it now because everything worked out. But what happened was I pulled into this pullout and uh, the dipstick was just barely touching the oil, right? It wasn't completely out of oil. But I don't want to go all the way into town to get oil pulling like 65,000 pounds of steel. So I detached my trailer and I brought it into town where I could pick up oil. I had to add in a few gallons of oil again. I came back to get my trailer now and now we're going to get to our yard and drop the trailer there so that somebody else can take over for this load because you don't want to leave this load just sitting around while my truck gets fixed because who knows what's going to be wrong with it. Hopefully it's something small. And uh, yeah, now we're going to keep an eye, very close eye on the oil, and we're going to get this thing back to the yard. I wish that I had a better option, but that is my best option right now. It's either that or I have to get this load recovered, and I think they charge me for that, to have someone come out here and pull this load out of here for me, and then the customer's not happy because they're not getting their freight on time. I'm not happy because I'm sitting in a motel while my truck's in the shop. The shop here was uh, booked up for days. I'd be sitting here for more than a week probably, and I'm only like two and a half, three hours from home. What's the point of that, right? So I went and got enough oil so that I can get myself to the yard. That way this trailer doesn't need to be recovered. Someone else can take the load, it can still be on time, and I can bring this truck to the shop and go home and spend whatever time it takes to fix it at home. So there's plenty of oil in the engine right now. Uh, it is leaking somewhat a little bit. I can't tell where it's coming from. And I, I can tell you it won't be a problem just for a couple of hours going home. It's not leaking that bad. It's just a steady drip from somewhere. So this is the decision I made. I don't know if it's a decision you would make or not, but I think I made the best decision in my opinion because otherwise everybody's not happy and this way just I'm not happy. So let's see what happens. Let, let's get this thing home and let's get it into a shop. Every shop I've been talking to in Steinbeck as well is booked up until next week. So I might be home for a while, which means I'll be making lots of YouTube videos for you guys if that's the case. <sighs> Goody. One of those days, it's been a, it, it, was, it was a good day. It was a good morning. Man, did that turn bad fast. So I'm just gonna follow up on yesterday's video today. This is the next day uh, I did get home. We're about to make a delicious breakfast. I am the Baconator. I'm in charge of bacon. So I make the best bacon, right? It's not true, but we'll say it for now. So yesterday, we brought the truck into the shop. Uh, it was very difficult to find a shop to do the work because everybody's booked up for the next week except for Trucks Unlimited in Steinbach, the Freightliner dealership. So we brought it to their shop and they're gonna take a look at it. They already called me this morning and said that they can't find the leak. So I told them to look harder. 
So I lost two oils and two two oils. I lost two gallons in a day. Two oils. I lost two oils two in oils. a day. Two and oils. the majority of it was lost during the night while I was idling, I think. So now they have it outside their shop right now, idling for a few hours, and then they're gonna take it back in. They've obviously cleaned off the engine so that they can see if it comes oozing out anywhere. Hopefully they can find that and hopefully it's just like a little seal that they can fix. It could also be that I was pulling 65,000 pounds and the pressure of the engine pulling that much weight up the hills could be just pushing it out of a, a seal that isn't quite sealed. I don't know. Hopefully they find it. And they're gonna also replace my windshield because I had a big crack across that. And they're gonna take a look at my bunk heater as well to fix that so that I don't have to idle it through the night because I've been spending around $1,000 a month just idling that truck. So hopefully they can get that bunk heater fixed. And if they can't, I have a pretty much brand new one in my Freightliner here on the road. Uh, that Freightliner is being sold off or got, being brought off our property this summer. I wanna sell it to whoever will buy it or just bring it away if I have to. But there is a bunk heater in there that's practically brand new that I just paid $1,500 for before I sold it. I mean, before I parked it. And I don't wanna sell that part. I wanna keep that and put that in the Volvo if this bunk heater doesn't work. Does that make sense? Forgive him for all his stuttering. He knows not what he does. He hasn't eaten yet. I I'll feed had... him and then he can vlog properly. Yes. I haven't had my bacon yet. The Baconator needs his bacon. You're in charge of bacon. Yep. I'm not doing this whole thing alone. I'll do this part. Who wouldn't want to do it alone? Someone's got to take care of the bacon, make sure it's done right. Right? Am I right? If mine isn't crispy, you're fired. <laughs> if I don't... Film another clip, she killed me. Just so you know who did it. <laughs> it was her. Anyways, I wanna end this vlog here because uh, that's, that's all that really happened. Brought the truck in the shop, it's getting looked at. I'll let you guys know in tomorrow's vlog if there's any new news. I'll see you then. Take care and don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button if you liked the video. If you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down button. I don't care, be honest. I'll see you tomorrow.